the right clothes are very important on Duke of Edinburgh. You have to have boots and most importantly clean socks for every day because if they get wet you do not want to be putting them back on the next day. You should yeah. also have trousers, like warm trousers, not just like kind of shorts, not bring shorts with you because then you're going to get tick bites. And a fleece. And depending on how disgusting you are, you're going to have a clean, maybe a clean top, but if you feel that one is enough, then it's up to you really. What about waterproofs? Well, waterproof trousers are an essential item of clothing. You just, I think there's, there's going to be some shown to you just now. They are the most oh, beautiful okay. thing. Okay. Look at them. Beautiful red colour. They're very important. You do not want to be without them on a Duke of Edinburgh expedition. They keep you dry in miserable weather and waterproof jackets. I mean, yeah, without them you would just be cold and miserable the whole time it was raining. So it's very important you have your waterproofs. They're essential. What about Andy? He oh, says don't bother to bring pyjamas, but what do you think? Well, I don't know. If you've got, like, something dry, that's not, if you have a spare pair of trackies with you, you probably don't need pyjamas if you're bringing spare pyjamas and tops, but if you're going minimal on the clothing then pyjamas are probably an essential item because you want something clean and dry to put on when you're going to bed, so... When I wake up, well I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you when I go out, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. If I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. And if I hate yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's We chose this camp spot are the shelter between the two hills and the relatively close distance to water, which, uh, makes the whole camping experience a lot easier. Right, so well, the basics for putting up a tent are red pole, red hole, blue, blue, blue pole, blue, blue hole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, uh, so what are you doing right now? Uh, we're just threading the poles through the holes <laughs> and clipping them on nicely so that the tent begins to take shape. <laughs> You have to make sure there's a elastic on the bottom of the tent that keeps the outer nice and taut and you have to make sure not to get it, them tangled because they could end up on the outside, which would mean you have to start again. Cool. Don't do that. So the outer layer of the tent has basically been erected. Almost. Yes, uh, once for this particular model of tent, uh, the direction of the outer is most definitely the most difficult part. But I think we've just about got that done. Hello. Can you explain a little bit about how to put up your tent, Megan and Rob? Well, first of all, you've got to put the holes through in the inner bit, and then peg down the inner, and then you attach the outer bit to get. So this one's different from the other three man because you actually put up the inner layer first. Yeah. Which almost makes it more important if if you're in the rain yeah. to get up really quickly. Yeah, because otherwise the inside gets wet and then it's not very nice to sleep in. Sarah is now putting the them, top like, layer location? over the inner layer of the smaller two man tent. <laughs> so it basically just matches up. And once you've got that over, if you're in the rain, it's much better to just try and get that over as fast as possible. As you can see, there's some guy ropes. And some of the time, if it's quite calm, you don't need to put all the guy ropes out. But if it's really windy, then it's really good for kind of holding your, down your tent and making it a little bit less um, precarious. Okay, this is our tea tonight. We've got um, chicken flavoured super noodles and some chicken red Thai bits and we're just waiting for the water in the tranja to simmer and then we'll put our okay. noodles in and have a nice tea. Hi, we're having savoury rice to add some variety to the super noodles and the 
pasta. It's bubbling away. It looks delicious. Yeah, it's just soaking up the water. Get that will hopefully also be the like Cabin Tester. As well as many hazards on Duke of Edinburgh, one of the ones you got to watch out for is ticks, which can be easily avoided by not running around in your boxes in the heather. On your Duke of Edinburgh expedition, there are many different ways of keeping dry. Examples of these are necessities like waterproof jackets and trousers, but a less well-known one is Tesco bags, which uh, keep your feet peachy and dry all day long. To set your map, you have to have um, the grid lines pointing towards north. So first of all, you want to have your compass with the red line that's movable lining up with north on your actual compass. And then you rotate the map so that upwards on your map is also pointing towards that way, the up northwards on your compass and you do this by having the north arrow facing towards the top of the map and having these lines on your compass lined up with the grid lines on your map which you can see there they're now lined up so that means that your map is set and it's pointing in the right direction so you should be able to work out where in your surroundings the different locations around you are Okay, so once you have your map set to take a bearing, we're going to take it from where we are now to the shelter that we'll pass tomorrow. You move the compass around so that it's still set properly, but the this arrow here, which is your di direction of travel arrow, is pointing where you're going to go. So that's now pointing towards the shelter. So then you take off the compass and then um, there's a little line there where you're going to be the bearing you're going to travel on and then you add two degrees to it to correct for the map being slightly off which is to do with like the difference of magnet magnetic north and stuff and then that's the bearing you travel on yeah. It's important to use your route card in conjunction with your map so that you stay on time and know where you're supposed to be at what point so that if your assessor is looking for you they know where to find you at what time Cute <laughs> I'm gonna be the man